Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Some people think I love saying that, but I just do it to keep with the flow, you know? An Air Force nun. Today is Tuesday. Oh, it feels like a Monday. But it's actually like a Thursday for me. Because like... So you didn't go to work yesterday? I did not go to work yesterday. And I'm not going to work tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to South Carolina. Yep, say hi to Conrad. K Plumbing Service. We're going to expand our reach up and down the East Coast. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, 7.35 in the morning, on our way to a job in Cedarhurst, which is in the five towns of Nassau County, Long Island. We're going to a pool heater that isn't heating. She's no bueno. God, I hope it's not an avian. No! Oh! I kind of hope it is. Oh, if it is an avian, yes. Yeah, I see so many of them. I'm I know, these are avians. Them. Well, I hope it doesn't kill them. Nice. You know, the, he called. The, the vent pipe pops it. He calls. He's not dead. Yeah. <sighs> these are avians. Hey, hi, BDK. Hey, everyone, I want you to say in the comment section down below, hi, BDK. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to a pool heater and it isn't working. So if you work on pool heaters, make sure you stick around and watch this. Let's get going. All right. There's the nice in-ground gunite pool with a diving board. I wish I had a diving board, I don't know. When I dig up my pool this year, we're gonna uh, do a diving board. All right. So it is reading 73 and set for 86. No bueno. No bueno. All right, Chris. Air Force nun. You know what we need? <clears throat> tester. What, which tester? The name of it, but, uh... Testo. 410A Testo. Oh. Let's grab the uh, the Testo. Refrigeration gauges. The one that doesn't say R22 on it. Now let's go Bosch. Let's go Bosch. All right, so we have, let's take a look at this Hayward Heat Pro. There it is. HP 21104T. She's running, so we know electrically we're good, but we don't have any heating. And if we feel the water in the pool, it's gonna be cold. Oh. They need some tile work, by the way. Oh, it's cold. That's a cold pool. That's a cold pool. All right, I got my knee pad here. Let's see what's going on here. We're gonna take off the uh, six screws that hold on the control panel. And we're gonna see what's going on, going on under the hood. I can tell you right now, this condensing coil looks like shit, by the way. Look at this. Condensing coil is filled, absolutely filled with pollen. See that? Absolutely filled with pollen. So we have very, very, very little heat transfer on this heat pump. And that may be an issue. And we'll, we'll see what's going on with that once we hook up our gauges. So at a minimum, we definitely need to clean this coil as long as our refrigeration circuit is good. All right. Let me uh, pop in my Vito. This is the, uh, the TPXXL Vito, low Vito. Let's get uh, my Milwaukee M12 impact driver. Let's open this bad boy up. Let's get the fill up bit in there. All right. And if you guys are interested in what's in my Vito, uh, there are. Oh, I totally forgot I had this in there digital manometer if you're interested in what's in my veto details in the description box down below all right let's see what's going on here. all right i asked chris for the testo i got the testo also got the yellow jacket we're not gonna need that yet though chris because a good technician is observant of his surroundings right. so the first thing you do is you take a a visual exam of the, of the patient, right? Because we are the doctors, the doctors in the house. Yo, I get me away from this clown. Don't you know I'm Mikey Pipes? Yeah. Mikey effing Pipes. 
I know. Ah. Sorry for the interruption. All right, so I took the cover off. And one of the first things I noticed is that the control board, right, was no longer secured to the bezel. All right, and I'm looking. I see there's a ground wire here that's severed. It's like a, uh, it's like a pigtail. I'll give it a little loopy loop on it. Hold on, let's give it a little loopy loop on it. Watch, I electrocute myself right now because it's a little pigtail. <laughs> <coughs> oh my God, China. All right, we have a control board here. This is the uh, interface board for the heat, uh, heat Pro. This is our transformer. We have a pressure switch here, or a flow switch. This senses water flowing through the, 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 the heater, which means it knows that the pool pump is running. If you didn't have enough flow, like the backwash uh, needed to be backwashed, the filter's not running at a, at a high enough speed, it's not gonna trigger the, or close the circuit on the pressure switch, and it's not gonna let the system run. We have a couple capacitors here, right? We have probably one for the condenser, I mean, I'm sorry, the compressor, one for the fan. And if we look down close enough, all right, we're gonna see a burnt up wire. She's charred. She's charred now. I think it's still connected. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull the disconnect. Watch out for that cut piece of slate. Okay. It does not sound like the compressor's running. All right. So now, now that that's discharged, we're going to grab this wire. And we're going to see it's still kind of connected there. It's just melted. Right. I don't know what's up with this transformer, but looks like maybe the transformer was replaced before. Wire nuts and stuff in there. But look at this wire. Ah, and there it is. Look at that. See? So we have we definitely have something causing an overload condition. And we're gonna wanna take the top cover off and we're gonna wanna take a look at the compressor and make sure that those wires are good there too because for some unknown reason, we're melting. We're melting wire. No bueno. No bueno. So we have a few screws here, Phillips screws, and our compressor is deep in there. So Chris, make sure you lick it before you stick it. Come on, you can laugh. You're gonna laugh. It's a, little early. it's a little early. A little boy. early. Look at that. And that time, ladies and gentlemen, it is 7.50. Oh, just turn it. <laughs> Once it's 8 o'clock, maybe then I'll laugh. Yeah, okay. So I'll, I'll give you 10 bucks to lick the capacitor. 10 bucks? Yeah, yeah, 10 bucks. To lick this? Yep. How about this? I'll give you 20. Make it like Come on, I gave you $20 to make take it, a shit in, the, in a pool. Make it like 1200 and I'll lick anything, right? <laughs> 1200 and you look yeah. anything? Yeah, that's a big anything. Hold on. Hold on. You said anything. Is there any there exclusions? Are. Is there any exclusions? <laughs> hold on. Let me give you something. Here. <laughs> you want to like suck on this? <laughs> it's a little small, but you know. Oh, oh you like you like them bigger. <laughs> it's on the uncensored version. Uncensored, yeah. <laughs> We're making them laugh right now. There are there are some out there right now that are hating on me, by the oh, way. For sure. Absolutely hating, like. And it's all good, guys. It's all good. You know, at the end of the day, we live and learn from one another. All right. We have this crispy wire coming from the contactor for my compressor, which basically told this guy to have a nice day. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm out of here. So this is an 80. Damn. This is an 80 microfarad capacitor. Like it. No, I don't want to lick it again. No. You gotta get both sides. And a 7.5, 80. Now, if we have an 87.5, I could put one in that does both. I could. I could. But you know what? I'm not gonna. We're gonna put back another 80 microfarad capacitor. Now, it's not gonna be a single. It's gonna be a dual. Because I don't stock them single like that. But we're gonna also gonna use our Nipix. To the Vito, by the way. Oh, zip ties falling over the place. We got the Nipix wire stripper. All right, 
I have my Klein needle nose, and all we need now is my, I think it's Nipix or Klein, um, a little connector crimper and a capacitor. You ready? Yep. Let's go. What? It's my new ride. It's your new yeah. ride? Go for Bobby. Go for who? Bobby. Bobby for president. <laughs> Seaman. Seaman. All right. Let's go to the truck. Is it clean in here? Eh. Eh. Oh yeah, not so bad. All right. Let's see what we have up in here. Deep inside. All right, we have an 80. You know what? I have an 87.5. Oh, tip, tip. Oh, good catch. That's a good catch. Now, we also need to, once we have the system up and running, I don't know if you took note of the condition of the coil. Not risking even even this one. I'll do it. I don't know if it's charged or not. I'll do it. How much are you gonna give me? I give you a high five. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> not even a handy J or a reach around. <laughs> Neither. Neither. Oh! I'll give you the address of a spot that does both. Latinas chicas. <laughs> Latinas chicas. All right, let's grab. I don't know if eh, we're not gonna need any water. Let's grab. Let's see. Let's open this up. Oh, we're going to the Oyo Hotel today, by the way. We need the 410A. Nope, not in here. Okay, let's put that back. I got a lot of stuff in here, especially Oak. Navine. Thank you for calling Navine. Due to high call volumes, but due to massive problems with our systems, we're experiencing high call volume. You're late to Exceeds 24 years. <laughs> you're, no, you're, your weight time exceeds the life expectancy of our system. Seven years. <laughs> All right, let's take a few of these jump offs right here. Take that. Let's see, little wire connectors. Where's your tool? All right. Where's your tool? Show me your tool. The tool. Oh, yeah. Come on. Wrong tool. Wrong tool. Oh, the other tool. We need to look in there. Sexual harassment in the workplace. <laughs> oh, no. I knew I should have got that insurance, too. God damn it. Oh, you got me. Oh, there it is right there. Look. Ooh. Wow. Klein. Okay, let's go. Is something Pool rules. Oh. 10. 10 a.m. to 1. And 2 to 5. Maximum person, 88 persons. There's no way, by the way, if there's 88 people in this pool, they don't need a pool here, that's for sure. They need some more chlorine. <laughs> All right. Now, let's try to patch her up together. We have, this is our common. All right. That's our common. And this is a common. Right, and those two will go to fan, and these two go to herm. Let's take a picture of that before I F it all up. Think I did it right? I think so. Let's see. Let's <laughs> we'll see if this works. It's not too complicated. It's not too complicated. Just stop at the green, not in between. All right, let's plug power back in. Oh, wow. Bzz. Bzz. It says something on it. I can't read it. Let's put this back onto the cover. Dash, dash. Now we have the dots. Oh, off will be split in rolling dots. Oh! <laughs> oh. All right, now it's says 73. And I think we have a, um, we have a weight, like system weight on the Honeywell thermostat. Now we wait for it. Hopefully I did that right. Hey, would. Hey, Wood. Hey, Wood. Hey, would you blow me? Hey, would you blow me? Hey, Wood. Oh, piece of tile. They need to obviously diamond dust this pool. 
Look at that. Oh man, like it's even the, the the cement is cracked around this. Oh man. And if this is my pool, I would redo the whole thing completely. I would have to redo the coping, the cement slabs that are poured around here. I gotta plant some trees for privacy. All right, I need privacy. And I will get rid of that sign. <laughs> but it's nice. Yeah, I hear you. All right, we're gonna wait for the time delay to kick in. And then hopefully the system works. And if it works, then we're gonna do a coil cleaning on this bad boy because she is filthy. And oh, I hear compressor. I hear compressor. We have to let the uh, system stabilize a little bit. We've got that cold air coming out of here. So far, so good. In a few minutes, we will feel one of, oh man, this is so annoying. Let's feel a outlet. We got one right there. Let's see. There's one right here. Let's see how that feels and then we can get our, oh yeah, she's warm. She's warm. She's warm. She's warm. I just stick it right in her. All right. All right, Chris, you know what we need to do now? We need to locate the source of, of water. <laughs> uh, preferably a, a, a hose spigot, like, like a silcock. Silcock. By the way, gentlemen, let's go Bosch. Let's go Bosch. Thank you so much, Bosch. Uh, Thermal Technology Group for being a corporate sponsor of the Mikey Pipes Channel. Really appreciate it, guys. So we need a source of water. We need a hose. We need the coil gun, and we need the Viper. What? Oh, there, there you go. It hose right there. I'm going to button her back up. I'm going to button her back up. I'm going to put the access cover back on. All right? And then we're going to do a, uh, a cleaning of this bad, bad boy, because she really needs to be cleaned. All right. I just used a piece of mastic tape, because it's gummed on one side. I'm not worried about it shorting out anything, right? Just gonna protect that from there a little bit. All right, just make sure it doesn't hit any of those connectors. So I got a piece of mastic tape here to hold down on the control board. Um, and I put a date on the dual capacitor that we installed. And I got kind of lazy. I guess I could have got a new piece of band iron here, but I just put the old capacitor in there and got the new capacitor in there. And I wrote DOA there and today's date on the new one. And now we're gonna put it back together. We're gonna take off the top. We're gonna uh, use the Viper. Uh, condenser uh, coil cleaner. That's the Venom Pack. I get mine from Refrigeration Technologies. Uh, you can get that at supplyhouse.com. All right, so I checked the amperage on the compressor. Looked okay. Looked a little bit on the high side. Um, when we turn the power back on, I'm going to just kind of pull power from there and see uh, what the, as the system is running. We're good? Before and afters? Yeah. Like a deck jet. Ooh. All right, so we're gonna wash from the inside out because air movement is from outside in. And Air Force None is gonna take the, uh, the, the liberty. So let's see if we can, wow. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty caked up there. We may have to get a little closer to the coil. Damn. All right, we may have to do a plan B. You know what? We have to do a plan B. How bad is bad? It's not even coming through. Oh, shit. Very, very little. Very, very little. A lot of pollen there. So let's see what we're going to do. We're going to uh, just hook up the coil gun. We have it on setting A. All right. And without, like, directing the water forcefully into it, you try to get it on an angle and just give it a good, give the outside a good rinse. You want to use about half of that and the other half to the inside of the coil. Okay. She's bubbling. She's bubbling. We're gonna make her like new. 
And ladies and gentlemen, show your support for Bosch and Mikey Pipes, Pipe Doctor Home Services. And if you're interested in getting a summer 2022 short sleeve t-shirt, you, you get them directly from Mikey Pipes. Email me, Mike at Mikey by Pop, Pop, MikeyPipes.com for a donation as little as $23. I will send you a shirt. We have them available in medium, large, extra large, 2XL, and 3XL. Dirty coil. If you're interested in knowing more or getting uh, the same tools that I'm using, uh, check out the links in the description box down below. You can get the new Calgon coil gun dispenser. You can get it at Amazon. I'd appreciate it. If you use my affili affiliate link, your purchase also gives me a small commission on the referral. For the Viper, uh, the price on Amazon, I'm gonna keep it real, guys. The price on Amazon is kind of like, I don't know, you, if, if, I think Amazon, Jeff Bezos wants to sodomize you. So I'm not gonna tell you to buy the Viper on Amazon. You can get the Viper on supplyhouse.com. All right, and the coil gun is about a hundred bucks, believe it or not, for that stupid little. What? Yeah, hundred bucks. No joke. Even Johnstone's like ninety-five dollars. So, you factor in one day prime. Oh, that's called I'll drive over there. <laughs> drive over there. Your ass for charging hundred bucks for a piece of plastic. Yeah, well, it's got some brass in it too, though. You know, those the, the, the scrap guys. You know, the scavengers will go crazy. All right. So now that the coil is completely clean, we can just let it go now if we wanted to, mm. right? Because there is no rinse with the Viper Venom Pack. No. There's no rinse. But we're going to let this sit for a few minutes and then give her a good rinse from inside out. All right. Well, Chris finishes up cleaning the coil, the condensing coil on this Hayward heat pump. A couple things to keep in mind. We had... And don't neglect this, right? And I say this again, a good technician is observing his surroundings. We had a very, very, very dirty condensing coil. I, I think it's a condensing coil, right? It's the heat pump, uh, can evaporate a coil, whatever. We had a very coil, <laughs> let's call it a coil, right? I get confused with these heat pumps. I, uh, listen, I'm Mikey Pipes. I do plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. Heat pumps is kind of like a new thing to me, but I know heat pumps is the reverse of air conditioning. If you know the refrigeration cycle, there's four basic components. You have a metering device, you have an evaporator coil, you have a condensing coil, and you have a compressor. That's basically it in the, in the refrigeration circuit. So if you know that, you can do rooftop units, you can do heat pumps, you can do commercial refrigeration in restaurants and uh, supermarkets, things like that. Keep in mind, we had burnt wires on our wiring going to the capacitor, which really took a huge shit on itself. Really, I'm calling like it is, right? And we had a very dirty coil. If you factor in the high amperage that the compressor is now going to draw because of the dirty coil, right? That may be the reason why we had failure of the capacitor. Now, I put in a dual capacitor. We had a single. I didn't have an 80, so I gave them an 87.5. They had an 80 and a 7.5. Now they have one that does both. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to plug the power back in. I got my Fluke 902FC HVAC clamp meter. We're going to do a temperature reading of the discharge ports on the pool. And we're also going to test amperage at the disconnect. All right, so while we're waiting for the compressor delay to finish up, let's take a temperature reading right now. Our ambient temperature is 68 degrees. Our pool temperature... That's cold. 72.4. So our ambient temperature, 68, and our pool temperature is, sorry, out, outdoor ambient temperature, 68.5 eh, degrees, and pool temperature, 72.5. We're gonna let this thing boot up, and then we're gonna check amperage at the disconnect and test outlet temperature of the pool heater. One other thing to keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, to all of you pool owners out there. You see that? Don't neglect your skimmers. <laughs> Damn. All right, well, we're waiting for it to start up. Compressor amperage 32 and locked rotor amperage 140, uh, 148. 
Fan uses 1.8, locked rotor 2.8. Water flow 30 gallons per minute, max 75, and the max temperature outlet on the inlet is 108. And we need a 70 amp breaker for the max, all right, minimum 42.4. So I have my multimeter, clamp on meter, right there on one of the lines of power. When this thing kicks on, we're gonna see what it pulls on, when it's off, and what it stabilizes it. All right. I missed it by a second. Oh, you're running at 24 amps. All right, on line one. So amperage is still kind of high. All right. But we're under, we're under the maximum of 70, so we're kind of good for now interesting that we installed this the guy bought it on amazon in 2015 yeah amazon 2015 he had another heat pump that one uh took a dump took a big giant shit like an avian does you know yeah and um he got this one on amazon we charged him i don't know a boatload of cash we drove up i actually drove the the, the truck to the back of his front door and he just dumped all his cash into the back of the truck and I said, listen, just because you bought on Amazon doesn't mean you're getting a better price. <laughs> I'm just deducting the price of the heater what I normally would charge. All right? That's how you do it. Installing customer supplied equipment like that, that's how you charge. All right. We're still at 23 and a half. Let's go test the temperature in the outlet. Set back the temperature. De plane, de plane. De plane, de plane. All right. Let's see. Gonna stick that in there. Alright, we're at 76. So we don't have that much of a temperature difference here. We have 73 to 76. It's three and a half degrees. Three and a half degrees, not much of a difference. But they say these things are efficient. That's what they say. We'll make note of that on our service invoice ticket. We clean the coil, replace the capacitor, and we check temperatures. If you have any questions on Hayward heat, prompt, heat pumps, reach out to me, Mike at MikeyPipes.com, or leave a comment down in the description box down below. Hi, it's Mikey fucking Pipes. <laughs> Something wrong with you? Yeah, there is. It's, it's called I'm your son. No. <laughs> Genetic must be. No, 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 no. You're my heir. You are the father. Oh, oh no. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Really appreciate your support of the entire community. Special thank you to all 39,000 subscribers. 39,000. It's epic. Epic, epic, epic. And I love every single one of you. Without you, I wouldn't be here. Well, I would be here, just not on this platform. <laughs> so thank you very much. Let me slightly tap on the pedal and roll past that stop sign. And let me try to, this cool boss, come on, bro. You know who's boss, huh? B-O-S-S. Ooh, not bad for an old chick. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time on my channel watching these videos if you enjoyed what you just watched if you found this somewhat educational i would really 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 appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button smash that thumbs up button and hit that notification bell to get post notifications when i drop new content look you only got your shit pushed back see effing new york and drivers don't you know we drive with a purpose think this guy's gonna try to cut me off nope he's smart you don't got balls of steel like i do i would have cut myself off Floor it! Floor it! Oh! oh my neck! Oh! I passed out. I shoot myself. Oh! <laughs> oh God! Get a check! <laughs> Big fat check. Rack the check. <laughs> Get your credit card. <coughs> All right, guys and gals, be well. God bless. Stay safe.